Save my soul. Greetings, ladies and ladies, and welcome to this new speed painting series on Ring of Art. While painting the last bits of the cursed city, I put the next project up for vote and let you guys decide if you rather had me paint up some Necrons or some Lumineth. And the resounding mass of you wanted the Lumineth, so here we go. Today, we are starting off strong painting the truly amazing character, the Light of Eltharion. I really just love this model and the lore behind it, though the paint job by Heavy Metal doesn't really do it much justice in my opinion. So I think we should go with something more grand and eye-catching. And to achieve this, we're going to paint him like the official artwork in the Battle Tome. Building Eltharion is not too difficult, though you should definitely be careful while handling the rather fragile pieces. The cast is very clean, and the only real problem we have with it is this gap between the two pieces of his cloak. An easy way to close this is to scrape along the line with the back of your hobby knife, applying only little pressure. The upbuilding debris will soon seamlessly close it. Now we just have to glue the body parts on the rocks down on the base, and while we're at it, Cover the ground with sand to give the earth a proper texture right away. That's it for the building, and after priming it white, we move right onto the painting. I recommend leaving the body, cloak and left hand disassembled, as it will make our life a lot easier while painting. The first things we want to take care of are his clothes, starting on his loincloth. We take a dark burgundy for the front and put some pure black on the inlay. Try to avoid the rest of the armor as best you can here. Your first coat will probably look very patchy as we can see here, but after a second coat everything will be nice and clean. In the next step I'm using pink to highlight the folds, although that really proved to be unnecessary. What is actually important though is to take some watered down burgundy and paint it over the better lit folds on the black inlay. Think of this step as more of a glaze than a layer. The reason why the pink was unnecessary is that we now take a rich blue and paint it over the outstanding folds as well, completely covering the pink up. For the back side, I would recommend to have the blue watered down to have it a bit darker, as it will lay in the shadow of the big cloak later. Speaking of, here we basically repeat the process all over. Two coats of burgundy on the outside and pure black on the inside. When picking out the big folds on the outside, we want to take one coat just to sketch where we want the blue to be. Basically, where we think the light would hit the cloth. After that, it's just a bit of easy wet blending, pronouncing the folds with a rich blue and sometimes filling in the recesses with burgundy again, in case the blue should bleed into it. Keep the surface moist, but not watery, and a smooth blend like this will be your result. On the black inlay, we first take some watered down burgundy to pick out the folds. While the paint is drying, take some rich blue and just blend it onto this big fold right here. Not too much, just so it can be noticed. And now for some spice. Taking a sturdy brush, we fling some small droplets of pure white onto the inlay to achieve the look of a night sky. If you get some bigger splats here, you may transform them into blinking stars just by painting four lines on them, but that's of course up to you. The sheaves for his swords both get painted with our rich blue too, as well as the two bands fluttering behind his helmet. We then take some jade green to fill in the recesses here and finish them up for now with some light blue on the edges. Now we can finally tend to his armor. For the base coat, I mix up a light terracotta and lots of white to get this warm, 
pale cream color. The tone should really be closer to just pure white than beige, or else it might look too dark for the mini in the end. For all of the metallic parts, we take out a very bright true metallic gold and paint scales, his left knee pad and other ornaments, most notably the lavish jewelry on his helmet. Here you're probably gonna need two coats as well, as metallics over a white primer always seem to be quite see-through. The only things we want to paint silver are his swords. For the feathers on his helmet, I wanted to do a similar gradient as for the cloak, continuing from the white with a very light blue, over to a rich blue, and lastly, paint the tips in dark burgundy. Also, don't forget to paint the feathers in the back. <laughs> now it's only some details that we need to take care of, starting easy with some light beige on the grips of his swords. Then we take some pure black and paint the inside of his armor with it. Be careful and try to avoid other parts of the models as best you can, but if you do make a mistake, you can quickly fix it up with a clean brush and some water. Last but not least, we take some light blue again and paint the seams of his clothing, which doesn't only clean up the paint job, but also helps the blending to stand out more. In this regard, we also use it to pick out the runes in the corners of his cloak and the small pommels. Altharion is now fully painted, but before we assemble him completely, we should take care of his base. Here we start by painting the ruins he's standing on in a bluish dark grey. In general, I like the base to be quite dark, so Altharion really gets a chance to stand out here. After the pillars are taken care of, we take some dark brown on a big brush and paint the ground with it. This is very easy for the most part, though painting around this weed right here was incredibly annoying. The plants themselves get painted in a mustard yellow, which I also use to give the ground a quick dry brush. And with that, the ground is complete and we can finally put Altharion back together. This is how he looks so far, and although we can probably agree that the color scheme checks out, he is really lacking some depth, and to achieve this, we want to give Altharion a quick wash. Now, we don't want Altharion to actually get much darker, so thin your wash of water and treat the armor to only a very light wash, just enough to get the contrast going. The base, though, gets our usual heavy wash, and while the paint is drying, take out that mustard yellow again and dab it in random spots onto the ground for more texture. Finally, we paint the trim in a smooth pitch black and call the speed paint officially done. I'm not gonna lie, this has been a comparatively speaking very tedious speed paint and maybe even the most complicated on this channel so far. But seeing the model now in front of us, I think that it was definitely worth it and I hope that you think so too. The speed painting portion of this project is now complete. And although he definitely looks great already, I think there's still some unscraped potential left in him. So if you've got a little bit more time, I'd like to use the next few minutes to show you guys a few extra steps on how to even further upgrade this already awesome looking mini. The first thing we want to do is to mix up an even lighter version of the tone of his armor and paint the fine lines with it. In the artwork, these lines are gold like his ornaments but I feel as if that would be too much. Take your time when doing this and angle the tip of your brush for more control. This step alone makes Altharion look a whole lot cleaner. Next, we brighten up the gems of his helmet, starting up with a very light blue until we reach a pure white in the middle, as if they were glowing. For the big gem on his right pauldron, we take a dark burgundy for the base, then some purple, and lastly pink on the light facing side. A simple white dot finishes the look. The artwork clearly shows Altharion's swords to be glowing, and I think that it definitely fits this character to have magical weapons, so let's do it. After the base color is dry, 
we start layering on even lighter shades of blue until we reach an almost white in the middle. Just take your standard light blue here and keep mixing in more and more white into it as you go. Finally, we pick up the engraving with pure white and we are done. For the gems in the hilt, I used the dark burgundy and worked up from there, but you can make them glow in the light blue as well of course. The last thing we wanna do here is to just softly paint the hilt purple to simulate the light of the gems reflecting from it. Now these are some sorts worthy of a demigod. As some last touches, I mix up some light blue and touch up any areas on the seams and bands that might reflect the light more than others. Then I turn it to his long sheath and fill in the lines with light blue and later white. The easiest way to do this is to moisten the surface with a little bit of water and then let the paint just bleed into the gaps. I also took care of the small gems, the same way that we painted the big one on his pauldron. The last thing we need to take care of is his base, starting with a medium grey and then a light grey dry brush on the ruins. For dry brushing the ground, we can take a light khaki colour, which we can also use to highlight the weeds. And as a small bonus and to bring some last little bit of colour into it, I decided to plant some bushes onto the base. Eltharion, reborn hero of the elves, is finally ready to fulfill his eternal duty, protecting the realms of light and crushing those who would see it destroyed. Hot damn, what a strong start into this new year. He definitely is the new centerpiece of my whole collection, and with this guide in your hands, I trust that he will be the same to you. As always, I will leave a detailed guide listing all of the exact paints that I used for this model down in the description of the video. And should you have any questions, maybe a couple of suggestions, be my guest and share your thoughts in the comment section. In the following videos of the speed painting series, we'll give Eltharion an army to command, starting with the Vanari or Ralan Wardens at its core. Also, we are just about to hit the 500 subscriber milestone. And I just quickly want to thank you guys for all the amazing support you give this channel. And if you like what you see and want to continue watching speed painting guides like this one, as well as other cool projects I have planned for this year, feel free to hit the subscribe button. As I am really looking forward to seeing you again in my next video. Until then, take care. Take your vengeance. Not vengeance. Justice.